So now we're going to move on to Michael Temple. Michael Temple is going to join us from Century 21. Uh, Michael is the Vice President of National Marketing and Events. Uh, he's leading all of these efforts for Century 21. Century 21 is the world's largest real estate franchise organization, approximately 12,600 independently owned and operated offices, more than 147,000 independent sales professionals in 83 countries and territories worldwide. So welcome, Michael. Uh, Michael has uh, led the consumer messaging rollout recently uh, surrounding this historic rebrand. I guess the first time that you guys have rebranded in 49 years. And uh, really two kind of big, uh, a big focus for him has been maximizing the media partnership with ESPN and Disney uh, during their first, I guess, a, a home. You did your first home on live commercial. That's kind of cool during Sports Center. So uh, Ryan's going to join Michael as the moderator. Uh, Ryan comes from Influential, and I'll let Ryan kind of give us a little overview of, of his company, Influential. Thanks for joining, guys. Uh, Ryan, I, I think you guys are on mute. If you guys want to take it off. Hey, can you guys hear me now? Yeah. Perfect. Hey, Michael, how are you? Good, Ryan. Good to be with you guys. You as well. Yeah, I'll keep my part quick. No, I'm not the star of the show. Is Michael? Michael is um, yeah, influential. We essentially match brands to talent, whether it's celebrities or hometown hero influencers, to drive actual outcomes. For example, maybe driving more leads to 21. Maybe it's maybe driving more Coke or Pepsi sales uh, for those uh, customers. But ultimately, the reason I want to talk today to, to Michael, I, Michael, I have a, a I mentioned this before in, in our pre uh, preamble. Uh, I was actually a real estate broker. 10 plus years ago, um, and it is a, uh, it's a, it's a very crowded space, especially I was in South Florida. And I, I remember the, uh, uh, all the different options that were out there. And Century 21 was the gold standard. It was number, obviously number one forever. Um, I mean, what made you come to, why did you pick Century 21? I, I, obviously you love it. You've been there for a number of years, but what, what, what drew you to them? Yeah. Um, well, one, Ryan, we'll definitely welcome you back whenever you're ready to get back in it, you know? Um, for Century 21, uh, for me, um, you know, at my point of my career, definitely was looking for kind of an education. Uh, I had come from, you know, some strong marketing opportunities in the past, a lot of it related to kind of small business opportunities. Uh, and I always felt like I needed that kind of corporate education in terms of how things get done from a marketing perspective and opportunity and growth. So a uh, great team at Century 21 that I got connected to through some relationships. Uh, I've been with the company for 10 years. Our rebrand was is about two and a half years in the making. So I've been kind of part of uh, the history of the brand for the 50 years that we've been a, a company. Obviously not for the full 50, but it's kind of um, a daunting task to be part of such an iconic brand. One that, you know, pretty much anyone I talk to is like when I say I work for Century 21, they know what we do. So. It's a powerful brand to be a part of. It's been an exciting adventure for me, especially in the last couple of years, as we really have kind of morphed and changed the brand for tomorrow. You know, being less concerned about our last 50, which had been awesome, but you know, being more concerned about you know what are we doing to make ourselves successful in the next 50. That's great. So you mentioned uh, two and a half years for, for a rebrand. How is it doing a rebrand during a pandemic? I mean, what 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 kind of challenges have you guys faced, and how have you guys hopefully uh, you know conquered that as best you can? Yeah, I, I think so. So the pandemic obviously comes a little bit into our history of the rebrand. You know, we had been at it. I always say it takes time to turn the Titanic around. So there might be people on this call who go by a Century 21 office in their market and, you know, still might see remnants of the kind of old brand. Um, like Dunkin' Donuts, you know, it's not, you can't turn every brand and building to Dunkin' overnight. So for us, uh, it's been a long history, kind of supporting and working with the entrepreneurs, uh, entrepreneurs in their market uh, with the rebrand, you know, making sure it's working from them on a timing standpoint, financially for them to make the shift and over. It's not, a, it's not an easy task when you're asking, you know, people who have been such veterans within the brand to invest in something like a rebrand is, is some, you know, not an easy task, but, I think we made a lot of strategic moves and correct moves along the way. And I think that just brought us then into the time of COVID, you know, that, that support 
you know, is, was amplified. You know, one of the values we bring as a brand is that you don't feel like you're alone in your market trying to figure things out. We have a powerful network of brokerages around the company that can be a support. You know, one broker is going to be an expert in one field of the business and another in a different field. So we leverage that kind of expertise throughout the time of COVID to bring value specifically on just an educational level to our brokers of like, what are the right steps? Being the fact that you're an independently owned and operated company leveraging the Century 21 brand, you know, what do we need to do to make sure that your financial future is a positive one and you stay ahead of this curve that's going to happen? And we're already seeing some real positive activity in the real estate world. How, how can we assist them in making sure that they were in the best place possible as we move through this was, it was our primary goal for sure. That's great. Well, um, it's a little bit in the weeds just because I'm actually uh, potentially going to buy a house at some point soon. Uh, sure. I, I want to nest these days with COVID and when I got out of your apartment. Um, I, I, so the interest rates are very, very low, which obviously bodes well. Yeah. And can obviously qualify accordingly. Have you, have you seen the market? I'm sure there's peaks and valleys, but have you seen the market generally kind of stay um, flat, go up, go down? I mean, very, very serious times for people out of work, and, 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 but there are people that if you do actually have the means to be able to do so and people have desire to basically not live inside of a small location, I guess so are, are, are your agents and is the overall market in a good place given COVID or is it in a bad place? Yeah. Um, so I'd say, you know, if you talk to a baby boomer generation, um, they would say if interest rates were this low back when I was buying my first home, you guys are crazy. So, you know, we definitely are definitely in a good time for buying. I mean, I don't want to come across as too salesy, but the idea of certainly from an interest rate perspective, um, you know, from a results and, and business standpoint, you know, what we're seeing is that, you know, we're uh, yeah, and, and you know, credit to all these companies that are out there surviving this who are hotel or entertainment based where like the days that they lose, you know, each day that they lose customers, they can't really make up those days because it's a gone, it's gone in their world. Uh, with real estate, we're, we benefit from the fact that, you know, people might be putting off the decision, but that doesn't mean that they're going to have it, you know, later in the year. So what we're seeing, you know, and what we saw was there's definitely was a huge dip in real estate business and transactions happening. Um, you know, across the U.S. Um, and but what we're seeing is there's a resurgence, right? Uh, so one, it just it didn't go away completely. A credit to I think the support we lent to our brokers and agents, and really also kind of encouraging them, providing the education that we did. You know, we continued to see business happen even during the toughest times of COVID. So a real credit to our agents on that behalf. But as we've come out and everything's different state by state, right? Different rules. Some states had, you know, real estate as a non-essential. Most states did have it as an essential business. So different challenges for our different brokers across the space. But I think holistically what we're seeing is if you look at the national market of real estate, every market's different, right? So even speaking today, some of our brokers are having the best months of their business and some are, you know, still suffering a little bit. I mean, nationally, what we're seeing is that there is definitely a resurgence in people buying homes and the market's improving. People are applying for more mortgage applications and all the rest, which is positive for us. And so we're seeing that, again, we can benefit from the fact that people might have put off a decision doesn't mean they're not going to do it at all. And typically, again, nationally, there's the spring and summer selling seasons of real estate, which are just, you know, the best times for, for us as a brand. And what we're just seeing is maybe those months got shifted. So there's no guarantees, still more to come. I certainly don't have that crystal ball to tell, you know, exactly what's going to happen. Um, but for us, we're definitely seeing a lot of positivity in terms of the activity. And like I said, some of our brokers having the best, you know, months of their career in their business. And these are brokers who've been in business for a long period of time. Well, this, this whole uh, series is around innovation. And obviously, to be able to have these great months and quarters, uh, people have to use every technology that's available for them. Uh, talk about you know, the market. Obviously, there's the Zillows of the world and other companies, and other those that shall not be named. Uh, and then obviously, you guys have your own as well. How is technology and part of your rebrand? How has that been something you had to deal with in the market, good or bad? Yeah. So, good question. I mean, for for us, um, you know, as a brand, one of the things with our rebrand, you know, we really delved into is this idea of, you know, what do we stand for as a brand? What's our why? Um, you know, as we're all trying to discover and have a purpose as brands here. 
you know, for us, we came up with our mission with our rebrand, which was defy mediocrity and deliver extraordinary experiences. So that's something we kind of hold. The brand has celebrated extraordinary experiences. We were the, one of the first brands to have ratings and reviews on our agents on our website. Uh, we have a whole quality service program that's dedicated towards celebrating agents who really go above and beyond in their service. So there's a lot of strategic moves we've made as a brand to really celebrate that, not just have it as a mission that's nice there, but like really make strategic business decisions to level up to that. And so that doesn't change during a pandemic, right? You don't say, all right, well, you know, uh, sorry, I guess we're not gonna provide quality service to the customers. Like we still need to figure out ways to do that. So technology was definitely a big part of it. A credit to our digital team on Century 21, rolling out, um, you know, home tours and virtual tours were always a thing. But as certain companies experienced, like it just got fast forwarded by six months, or I, I guess the, this going thing is that, you know, three years of development became three months, you know, something that would have taken time to roll out became such a necessity. So for us, I, I feel like we made some really strong decisions on our, our digital landscape to provide virtual tour solutions for our agents so that they could stay active for their customers. So. I feel like that was definitely a primary focus with, uh, with us is while there was still some, you know, not hand to hand kind of interaction because everyone was keeping their social distancing, but we needed those virtual solutions as to, as well. And the, the team on our team kind of doubled down on that for sure. Is there something that is like the next 4.0 version that, uh, I'm, you know, I don't know, I, technically the virtual tours are essentially VR, but VR usually on the two dimensional screen. Is there a new version where you ever think it is much more digital, just kind of as a, as a, as a base state going forward? Or do you think no matter what, it has to be that someone has to walk the ground, have to have that person that is they can trust? I guess, I guess what's, your, what's your POV and what the future could hold in the coming five years? Yeah, uh, so again, probably my own viewpoint here a little bit. Um, the idea I think of, I, I think I have a healthy approach to it, like it's a balance, right? There's always gonna be those customers that they want to hold something, they want to see it in person. And so I think for us as a brand, you know, we want to make sure that we're serving whatever need a customer has, right? I mean, even this time of COVID, there's certain customers who they want nothing to do with meeting you in person. And there's some who really feel they need to see a person. Mm -hmm. What can we do appropriately to do that? So I think the same thing will ring true with technology. I think from an investor standpoint, the idea of virtual kind of viewing a home was already a thing, right? There was a lot of investors mm -hmm properties unseen. And that has to do with building a strong relationship with an agent you trust. Um, and thankfully, you know, with our agents, we have a 98% recommendation rating, um, which is, again, talks to the value of the brand and how much we really value customer service. So, so for us, I think, you know, virtual thing will develop, things will happen. Uh, I think there's players trying to get into the business. I always say with us and, and service, I seeing our brokers and agents is like, you know, as a brand, we've been there when, you know, TV and newspapers were the thing from a marketing standpoint, and that was it. And that's all we did. And that was like our marketing value. We've pivoted into all the digital tools and CRM platforms and different things that we can provide to our agents. And we've made partnerships with the uh, websites that people are going to view homes. And whatever the next future is, I think that the benefit of being part of a brand is like our product isn't necessarily the solution we can pivot and move with that solution right so i think mm -hmm. 21 we're willing to adapt with the entrepreneurial nature of our brokers the same way we're willing to adapt to the latest technology needs of the consumer and so that's kind of our kind of game plan that's great yeah, whether it's the technology or innovation ultimately you're telling a story to consumers to say here is why you should go with us and you know as, as the leader in, in the space it, it, I'm, out of curiosity is Part of that story now um, is very specific to COVID, a work from home type angle. Are you guys trying to create consumption based content where it's like, hey, part of your decision making should be where you're going to work potentially for the next two years? Because if, if offices are not going to be as, you know, uh, you know, populated with the current COVID stuff, is that kind of part of any of the, the advertising you're doing, which is a, a WFH type scenario? Yeah, no. So for us, definitely, I feel like from a content perspective, you know, we're adapting our content to kind of talk to these topics, right? The kind of new normal, uh, as much as we hate the phrase, right? Um, people adapting, uh, our brokers and our agents kind of knowing the best practices for people who, who do work from home currently and, and what are the things a new homeowner should, knew, uh, should know. I think, um, you know, they're, they're in the conversation of all COVID, there's this idea of like the flight from the cities. 
Um, you know, time will tell how significant that. I do think it will be statistically significant how many people are fleeing kind of the city environment. It was so cool to be in New York City, but it's not so cool if I'm stuck in this place. It was because of the nightlife and the activity that I did outside of the home. And if I'm stuck there, I probably want a bigger space. So I think for us, you're definitely going to see a statistically significant amount of people, you know, making that decision from a, a work from home perspective to kind of change where they choose to call home. And again, for us, because we're a global brand, for one, and then national brand, you know, we are able to kind of help a consumer with any of that need, right? If they want, to, if they want to move into certain environments, we can assist them. And then from a brand content perspective, you know, we want to just make sure our brokers and agents are kind of aware of the best practices for those types of decisions and, and be a resource for them so that we can help them service the customer. That's great. Well, I mean, this year has been the keeps keep on, keep on the hits keep on coming. We have obviously uh, COVID, we have uh, the protests, the Facebook boycott, uh, there's currently a TikTok ban, is that, and a number of things are happening throughout the rest of the year. I mean, I, I guess from your POV, um, you know, what is, you know, COVID, you obviously, have, you guys have made the, 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 the strides from a safety perspective. From a social perspective, you know, how, how do you guys lean into what's happening from a political standpoint or a social standpoint, social injustices? Is there some sort of something you guys have done from a outwardly facing way or is there any, any, any sort of POV you have on what's happening with the protest or the, the, the protesting period? Yeah, well, I mean, for one, we, we exist in the market that those protests are happening, right? So our headquarters for the brand is located in uh, Madison, New Jersey. Uh, all of our team is not in Madison, New Jersey right now. We are uh, at home in our homes. Um, we have a, a, a scattering of employees that work around the country as well. Definitely our field team, obviously, but even from a marketing standpoint, a couple of our team players who are out in different parts of the country but our brokers are, are in all the markets that are, are being affected. So I think one, we, we, we as a brand have a sense of care, right? We wanna make sure that we're taking care of our brokers and their needs during this time. So protests were happening right across the way, just kind of giving them the support they needed to kind of figure out what their best response should be. Um, you know, each of our companies are independently owned and operated. So as a brand, we wanna provide the right proper support to give them kind of the strategic insight to know what to do if they're they're dealing with kind of issues related to agents decisions comments their agents are making on uh kind of social media platforms how can we kind of educate them on best practices and then internally obviously looking at ourselves right what are we doing as a brand to help with the overall conversation the larger corporation that century 21 is a part of is called Realogy. they've been doing some really great things that kind of that level and in even our brand level to make sure we're, we're making kind of a change as, as we can do it and see fit. And then obviously, you know, Century 21 has always been a part of the fair housing practices uh, that we're a part of and have always kind of, you know, um, shouted from the rooftops the importance of diversity. I would say, you know, as a brand, we are a very diverse brand with all of our agents across the country. We have strong relationships with organizations like NAREP, the National Association of Hispanic Real Estate Professions, NAREP, ARIA, all these kind of industry professions that celebrate diversity have always been a part of our DNA as well. So it's kind of hopefully not something that like we shined a light on and we weren't even thinking about, like we already were thinking about it, but certainly it all helps kind of make sure, you know, what are we prioritizing as a brand? So it's been, it's been a good conversation internally and externally to our brokers and agents. Well, you guys are approaching it the right way, and it's like you, have a, you have a great pedigree from you know, from years past. Yeah. Um, so, so we've seen the the you know all the the COVID, the protests. Now, in all of that, live sports has been something that we've obviously been yearning for. That just came back with uh, uh, baseball and and uh, and basketball. Uh, I, I'd love for you to talk more about some of your partnerships with like ESPN. Uh, and those commercials are hilarious. You guys have <laughs> obviously uh, created created great content. What, what, what made you guys go that route? You have, you have all the options in the world. Why, why go the sporting route? Yeah. So um, I, as a brand, uh, you know, even before I joined the brand, we definitely have a strong history in sports. Um, the Century 21 brand, I think, I don't know if we were the first brand to sponsor, but we're, I, I've literally been in conversations with people like, oh, love you guys sponsoring the kind of home run derby. Uh, and I'm like, we haven't done that for years, but people just still, I think <laughs> people's doing it right now or they at least did it last year. Um, so 
for us, we've always had a strong kind of partnership relationship in the sports world. But again, when we did the rebrand, the idea of this kind of challenger brand mindset kind of came to light in like, you know, we are the most recognized name in real estate, Century 21. Uh, according to Millward Brown, you know, pat ourselves on the back, right? You know, um, maintaining that is important to us. So that said, obviously, you know, even on the previous interview, going over OTT, all the newest, latest, you know, programmatic, all the ways that you can reach consumers, there's, there's an unending amount. You know, our uh, media buy is on behalf of our brokerage community. So we have to make sure it's done on a national scale. And then we want to make sure that we're partnering with media that actually celebrates that brand story. So, right. So I, I said, we're a brand about defying mediocrity, deliver extraordinary experience. Well, we believe that, you know, the relentless agents that we're trying to attract to the brand and the consumer that we want to value the, the service that those agents bring, there's a natural correlation with like sports and the sports athlete world. Right. So, you know, the same way a LeBron James or, oh my gosh, if you watched the last dance with Michael Jordan, which thank God we had during the pandemic. Right. Uh, yeah. <laughs> is like the the idea of the mentality that they bring to their craft, right? And so for us, we believe that we want to make that correlation between a real estate agent. Uh, if you look at media, I mean, whether it's Modern Family, Phil Dunphy, right? I mean, who doesn't crack up when you hear him talk? But he's kind of a goofball when it comes to his the way he approaches real estate. And if you look at a uh, real estate agent for trade in media, I can't tell you how many uh, bench jokes I've seen where it's like, Oh, you're a real estate agent. What do you like people sitting on your face on a bench or something like those go to lines? <laughs> like, so they're out there and it's, it's kind of funny, but you know, what within century 21, we want to do is make sure, are we elevating the idea of what a real estate agent should be? So again, that correlation to sports in terms of the relentless attitude of our agents, but then also consumers expectations. You know, we want to make sure that, you know, I mentioned the 98% recommendation. We want consumers. The actual statistic, Ryan, is that 70% of consumers pick the first real estate agent they come across. So they're not taking the time to find the best agent. They're just kind of, oh, you're a real estate agent. They're working with them. You know, not a bad deal if you're that real estate agent. You're like, great, they found me. <laughs> you know, what, what, what kind of, I think as brand marketers, we'd be like, well, that's a good thing. We actually see that as problematic because we, we feel that people are not taking the time. You know, people are taking more time looking for restaurants on Yelp to find what restaurant they're going to go to than they are a real estate professional, the like most significant investment in their life. Like that's a problem. So, so for us, it's like, okay, one, making a media decision that we feel we can, um, you know, ties to our brand mission Two, allows us to tell that concern, that brand story. And then again, pushes consumers to ex expect more in the executions. So a lot of our creative doesn't have to do with the, kind of the dream of home ownership, which it's easy to fall into that trap. But if we were on HGTV running ads about the beauty of buying a home, how would you distinguish between like the show you're watching and the ad that you're seeing? Um, so we try to differentiate ourselves in kind of an unexpected way and focusing on like those kind of consumer PSAs. Like, are you expecting enough from your real estate agent? And that's kind of our unique angle. And the reason we're picking partnerships like ESPN which naturally we feel sports draws people together. And we also feel that, you know, we know all our brokerage communities, whether in college towns or not, or NFL towns that are, you know, the stadiums on the street, every town that we're in has sports and there can be that local marketing effort as well, that it all kind of ties together. You said the word relentless a couple of times. Now, I, I, um, what, give us a little more, uh, uh, for those that haven't heard it yet, the relentless podcast you're doing uh why that why that medium and uh, what's the content is the content about the, the is it about the how, how they can get up in the morning and be relentless so what's 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 yeah. the what's the angle yeah so uh good question the so again like i i talked before about you know our brand can pivot with whatever the next technology is whatever the next solution is from a consumer angle agent angle I say the same thing rings true with marketing. You know, obviously podcasts are something that's becoming more and more common thing for people to to listen to. Um, I've actually interestingly found during COVID, my podcast listening has gone down a little bit because I relied on my car drive to do it. So just a tidbit there. But um, when we approach the idea of creating a podcast again, it's like, all right, we could make a podcast about real estate, but we're that's not like there's probably plenty of those out there and sure enough there are, and they don't get a ton of kind of listening and viewership wise. 
So for us, it was like, all right, what's our unique angle on this? And this idea of relentless, the, the relentless podcast is that what we do is we're not just a podcast dedicated towards a real estate audience. Um, our podcast is dedicated towards the idea of this, you know, relentless entrepreneurial salesmanship attitude. So a lot of the guests we've had on, um, they might get a question or two related to real estate just because there is the brand connection there. And obviously we highlight the brand, but the storyline within that podcast, and I would recommend people, of course, downloading it. We're in the top 5% of podcasts globally, no big deal. Um, but, but the content in those podcasts have to do with, you know, for instance, we bring on a comedian and he talks about the idea of dealing with rejection, right? He's not an A-list comedian. Um, he's someone who has to fight for every job. Well, that correlates to that relentless mindset of agents or anybody in the sales profession, you need to pick yourself up every day and still get into the game. Uh, we've interviewed um, the gentleman who was the actual uh, head of negotiations on NFL contracts for the Green Bay Packers. So players contracts, right? Mm -hmm. Talk about something that is like mind boggling dealing with a contract. You're dealing with someone who knows what every other player in the NFL is getting paid. They know the statistics and stats on how those players are playing. And they know what all the other players on the team are making. Like it's, it's going to be news, right? It's like, you know, uh, if we could all be Patrick Mahomes right now, right. And got our 500 million. Content. So he's dealing with super sensitive conversations, which he then needs to convince those people. Hey, I know you think you're worth this, but we're only going to pay you this, but yeah, go out there and win us a Super Bowl and be about the team. So and you can correlate those conversations. And this guy was like brilliant with his conversations and the way he approached it from a very human standpoint and tie that into the way the real estate agent should be talking with the consumer to give them, I know you think your home is valued at this much, but here are some of the realities of the market right now. That's very sensitive conversation. So that's our podcast angle is like, how can we more be about the relentless attitude and mindset that's in the kind of sales world um, in the appropriate way of delivering on extraordinary experiences. So tying it all brand messaging. Great. Well, we are now in the Q and a portion of uh, the session here. Uh, cool. a, a lot of great questions here. Um, so kind of pursuant to that, so you mentioned obviously some of the ESPN TV or linear pieces, you mentioned the podcast. So the question from Darren is the century 21 marketing mix change during the pandemic. Um, and then what's the future look like and specifically influencers and influencer marketing or celebrities, where does that kind of fit in your media mix? Is it, is it, is that a part of it? Is it on the outside in the PR front? Kind of how do you think about that as part of your overall? Yeah. So good question. Um, definitely during COVID, um, one of the kind of extensions and ways we helped our brokers is we actually uh, made it so that they didn't have to pay into the BMF, which for us, it's a brand marketing fund, which was a good big business decision. Uh, it allows our brokers to have some relief that we thought was going to be needed. We actually did it proactively. It wasn't reactively. So like pretty much the day I went home um, and started working from home was the day we announced these discounts to our brokers. So that took its toll on our brand marketing fund. But again, it, it's kind of an interesting scenario because we actually get paid on the transaction. So our biggest thing is we don't make money unless our brokers are making money. We want to grow with them. So for us, you know, we could make some of that up at uh, the end half of the year, but definitely as us has made us so we had to prioritize different things. Um, so one of the things that we brought back like almost immediately after like a, a short pause was our lead generation working with our century21.com team and, and getting our lead generation back up and running with our brokers and, and getting them the business they need. Um, the other thing, just in terms of the second part of your question, in terms of influencers, we definitely have as a brand kind of gotten into that space. Uh, for us, it's an opportunity to kind of hit a new audience, right? That's why, you, you know, not the only reason, but one of the reasons you work with influencers is you're trying to reach that that new audience that you wouldn't get by yourself. So ESPN has been a part of that because we're not just on their linear programming, we're on their, you know, social handles as well. So it's allowed us to do that. But prior to that, I've been part of campaigns where we work with some uh, pretty impressive influencers. Um, that have really been able to kind of help us promote our story. One that I'll highlight is right now, we're working with Eva Longoria and her foundation. Um, so we've been doing some really great things in terms of the Hispanic marketing efforts of the brand and really connecting with that entrepreneurial uh, Latina who wants to get into real estate and 
And Eva herself is all about that kind of female empowerment, especially within the Latina community. So it's been great to leverage those type of relationships and maintain those. They've definitely taken different turns because like live events aren't happening for us as a brand. So kind of reprioritizing and shifting appearances and posts and all the rest have happened, but some, something we definitely value. Well, Eva's an amazing ambassador. So you guys are doing some great things. Um, yeah. So question here, uh, this is the chance to wax poetic, so I'm excited to hear from you. Um, uh, what is your what is the best advice you've ever given as a leader and as a manager of others? So what's how are you imparting your knowledge? What, what, what's something you, you want to give to the people that are watching right now? <laughs> um, it's a good question. I, I don't know if I've uh, put down any of my quotes on paper. My dad had a phrase. Uh, when he handed me a shovel and said, kind of dig a hole, son, like it's the only job where you start on top. Um, every <laughs> time, right? You got to really prove yourself. I, I think within the marketing space, what I would say is, I, I, one, I appreciate when someone's passionate about a project. And, and I really, in my mind, I'd rather give one of my team members to go ahead on a project that they believe and are passionate about. I'd give that a lot more credit than something that I think is right that you know they're only going to be 50 percent passionate about right like if there if there's a line of like me just getting my way and them getting what they think is the right solution but they're going to be passionate about it that passion will drive so much more success towards that idea than a forced concept or idea so i think in managing teams you know one of the things i jokingly always say to my team members and you know if we have someone coming out of college and joining the brand i said we're all guessing you know Nobody has the silver bullet here on like marketing that it's going to be success. You have the most brilliant minds who highlight the campaigns that were successful, but beneath that are the 10 ideas before it that weren't successful, right? So there's things we can do to make up for it and invest in media and make campaigns look better than maybe they are creatively. Um, but I think in the end, we're all guessing. So let's keep guessing and working creatively together. Love it. Keep on guessing. Um, so the the next so that's that's great from a top down like on, on like the like the the I think I think NFL like the NFL the Shield the Shield most of different teams um, when you get down to the individual markets how are you guys communicating with them and getting them to be inspired uh, during this remote work session now granted all forms of uh, real estate is obviously on you know on your own on your own entrepreneurship but you know how, how do you communicate at mass scale because you guys are obviously putting out B2C messaging and some uh, you know, to your agents as well. But in, the, in this crazy time, how do you dive in deep and get to the, the, the give them the materials they need to, to be successful? Yeah, so for us um, during the pandemic, uh, it's kind of amplifying everything we were doing, but you know, definitely um, we did things like, you know, our leadership were on weekly calls with our brokers, sharing best practices, you know, we'd gleam insight from something one broker had done, and we'd say, let's bring that to the entire community. Um, we're pretty heavily invested. Well, I say invested, that's not even the right word. Uh, we're pretty heavily involved in uh, the Workplace platform. So are you familiar, I assume, with Workplace? It's a Facebook product, but for business. So for us, uh, we're pretty unique, right? So, you know, a lot of times companies that are on the Workplace platform are employees. So it's, you know, whatever organization using workplace, and there's certain behavior that happens in those environments because people are employees. So, right, you're only gonna be so kind of, I don't know, cutting with your comments or challenging with your stuff. We have our entire broker and agent community on this platform, and they are not shy. They're not, I, nobody in our organization can turn around and fire them. Um, we can certainly, you know, get in arguments or whatever, but like they can be really honest with us on this platform. And one of our brand kind of values is the idea of open the house. We believe in really open conversations, challenging conversations, uncomfortable conversations. It's a value we have called open the house. And so the workplace platform has been a really great opportunity for us. And, you know, what we found is more people were on there more frequently, right? So they, a lot of agents who, again, they were out there in the market, keeping themselves busy. They were still making phone calls, reaching out to consumers but they did have a little bit more time on their hand and we found, we found them more on that platform. So creating resource hubs within the workplace platform, creating those weekly kind of calls and touch points, uh, just that sense of community. Cause for us, you know, not doing live events, like there's that brand pride that comes in with our live events and 
that sense of community that we definitely have missed. We, we canceled some of our biggest events to, for the year. Um, so for us, that platform itself has become just, you know, that much more needed during this time. Well, Michael, this has been a pleasure. You are, uh, I love your advice. And I think that ultimately everyone learned something from today. And uh, I, I'll, I'll turn it back over to the Brand Innovators team. Uh, great talking to you, brother. Yeah, okay. right. awesome. Look forward to the next episode. You're on mute.